So, this is the second part of our discussion on interface. In the last module, we have discussed the interface and basically introduces the basic concepts that is there in interface in Java. So, today we will discuss some more advanced features are there in the interface and finally, we will summarize the lessons that we have learned so far the in interface is concerned. So, there are like different classes, built in classes. So, there are also some standard interfaces available in Java. So, the there are few of course, not many. So, the important the mostly used interfaces those are already defined uh, they are called the built in interfaces like here iterator, clonable, serializable, comparable. These are the most frequently interfaces. So, in our subsequent few slides, we will go through each interface quickly and then understand what they can do for us. So, let us have the discussion on iterator. So, iterator interface is basically if there is a collection of objects right and then how this collection of objects can be processed. So, regarding these things the iterator interface which has been defined in java dot util package. So, in the java dot util package this interface basically help us to uh, manage the set of objects we can say the collection of objects. Here the interface the name is iterator as we see here this is the name of the interface iterator which has few methods as we see here has next, the next and the remove. So, these are the three standard methods are there in iterator and you can use this interface to implement our own class. Here is an example for example, how this interface can be used to in implement our own class. Here we can create, we can just implement using the concept this is the class this may be say example iterator implements iterator and then here my shapes is the shape of some objects that you want to have it in the shape geometry and then this is the iterator object is created. Now, here if you see for this iterator iterator dot has next that means, it will automatically check the shapes the collection of objects and then it will check that whether the next in the list of collection the element is there or not. So, here has next is basically the it a method that is there in the interface is basically implements it and then this is the implementation how it will work there. So, has next, next similarly remove is basically another interface to remove uh, an object from a collection. So, this is the one example of iterator interface uh, that is there in Java. Uh, more, more specifically in java dot util package. Now, clone, clonable is another interface is basically this interface is, uh, is basically to implement a class which can create a copy of an object. So, it is a clonable means it will basically make a copy of the objects. As we see here the this interface uh, in fact is an, a new office can it does not have any method it is basically empty and it basically helps us to have uh, the copy of an objects their copy may be two types one shallow copy and deep co deep copy if the shallow copy it will just logically make a copy and the deep copy is based physically make a copy that means for all objects reference variables class variables instance variable everything they will make a separate instances or copy of the same object. So, two objects will be created having the same things are there. In some situations the duplicates of the objects needs to be controlled and so, clonable interface can be called for this purpose. And in case suppose this interface does not work it throws exception. So, this exception regarding we will learn about it. So, anyway the if there is any mistake regarding the copying and objects sometimes there may not be any permission or copy is not successful whatever it is there in that case it will throw an exception which is for the uh, uh, preparing the robust program actually. So, this is the clonable interface and then example here we can consider one example here uh, this example is basically so, so how the clonable interface can be used here say for example 
Uh, here basically the car is a class which implements the clonable, these are the methods in this class car and then here we can see these objects we create a objects of type and then clone is the method that we have discussed here and this method is basically make a copy explicitly that is meant by the class declaration by the user. So, this is the one example how the clonable uh, interface can be used in Java class declaration and the next is serializable interface. This interface is basically helps a programmer to build their classes while they want to uh, communicate or send some objects over a network to a distant objects or distant PC, distant server whatever it is there. So, this basically helps to make the things called the serializable and here is a quick example of the serializable again from the car is the class suppose it implements serializable uh, interface whatever the methods we have discussed in the next class we can copy it verbatim here. So, this will complete the class declaration and here is an example how the serialization uh, serializable interface can be used in the machine. Here we can see uh, we create the object for writing or reading from the writing from the net network channel or reading into the network channel or writing into some file or reading from the file. So, this basically all the methods that we have discussed uh, that is that is there as an abstract method interface can be redefined here in the class declaration and can be used here. So, this is an example of uh, serializable interface and then finally, uh, the idea about uh, the clone, uh, comparable interface. So, here is an example of comparable means sometimes it is required to compare two objects whether they are same or different. So, if it is like this, so Java developer has proposed one interface called the comparable interface and here is an example of this comparable interface and we see how it, the method that is compared to which is basically an interface method we redefined here in our class declaration. So, this is basically the user defined redeclaration for the interface method and it basically compare objects. So, obviously, it is up to the user for comparing the different objects, how you can compare one objects with other objects belong to the same class whatever it is there. So, this will return uh, a boolean values whether true or false like. So, this is the interface uh, comparable uh, that is defined in the, uh, the again all the, this is also defined in the java dot util dot package. Now, so these are the few standard interface usually programmer prefer to have their own interface related to the particular project and use them in their program other than using the standard interface those are there in the Java system. Now, okay, this basically uh, covers all the basic concepts about the interface and before concluding this interface concepts I just want to highlight few more important things which is very important to remember whenever you are handling with interface. So, the defining an interface as we have learned that an interface can be defined using the special keyword that is there in the Java is called the interface. So, here basically the basic syntax is the interface declaration by using the interface and giving the name of the interface and then this is the body of the interface. Now, so far the body of the interface is concerned this body includes few things the variables or members and the methods and as you have already mentioned that the methods which should be there in the interface should be declared as a public and abstract there, there means the method should have the only signature giving the name return type then parameter list and no body of the method. On the other hand so far the members are concerned the member should be declared as public, final, static and they can be initialized by some values. Actually the methods, the variables or members which are there in an interface they should be treated as a global. So, if any class which implements this interface has the complete access to all the members that is there in the interface and the methods needs to be redefined the class which implements an interface. And as I already mentioned 
while I was discussing about the interface that if you do not declare a method as abstract or a fine, uh, fine, uh, abstract or public by default it will be taken as a public and abstract and more one important concept is that no method should not be declared as a static. So, static method is not allowed in any interface declaration. So, these are the few rule of thumbs that you should consider while you are declaring your own interface in your program. Now, once the interface is defined, this interface needs to be implemented. So, this implementation is by virtue of declaring a class. Here is an example how an interface can be implemented. So, the basic rule is that an inter say this is the class class name which basically implements interface and here the two things are optional extends clause is optional and then also it can at one time interface two or more interfaces implements two or more interfaces. So, this basic idea is that a class can inherit from the other class that is why the extend clause will take care and at the same time it can implements one or more interfaces. So, this is the concept. So, the now we have a demonstration in our next module to discuss about how all those things works together. And as I uh, mentioned that this class that we should have and that class should be declared as a public there means be ok this should be public here for example, declared as a default it is not allowed. So, we have to mention that this is the public. Now, there are few cautions that needs to be taken care whenever we implement an interface is that if an in interface in if a class in implements two or more interfaces which has the same method and then th that method should be overridden by the class and it has only one copy. Now, when we say that same method it means that the methods which are declared as an abstract in the interface they have the same return type, same method name and same list of parameters. If anyone is different the method should be treated as different and then different inter implementation in the class is required. So, this is the important thing that you should consider and the methods which basically implemented in your class also that needs to be declared as a public because this method should be accessible by anyone. So, no private, no protected method as an implementation is allowed in the class implementation. So, these are few things that you should note while you are considering uh, the con implementing interfaces. Now, here is a quick example, here you can see that how an interface can be implemented by a class. In this case, the name of the class is client and here you see this is the callback method which is there in the interface and we implement this method as a public and then whatever that I. And while we implement at the same time we have to consider the return type and the list of parameter should match these which are there in your interface declaration. Otherwise this will treat as a completely new methods the methods of its own in this class itself. What I want to say here is that in fact we are to overwrite the methods which is declared as an abstract and public method in the interface declaration. Okay, so, this is the some standards procedure that needs to be followed while we are using the implement implementation of an interface by a class. Now, here is another example that we can say again uh, this is the class client which implements the callback, callback is an interface here. So, this is the method that we have declared in the interface and implemented here and at the same time the class which implements an interface it may contains its it may contain it may include its own method as well the methods that is overridden in the interface. So, for example, here this is one method which is the own method in this class client that means, it is just like a inheritance concept like. So, it is basically one other way we can say that this class clients inherits the callback where the callback is an abstract uh, class we can say in that sense. So, this is the idea about how a class can implement this means that implement means the method should be overridden and it can include its own methods if required and 
no variable should be declared with the same name as that is there in the interface there. So, the method should be uh, in fact, because it is a static and public declared in the interface. So, we cannot re-declare re or redefine the same variable name or members in the class implementation. Okay, so, this is the idea about uh, so implementation of the interface by means of a class and Java also allow partial implementation. Say suppose in an interface there are two methods and you implement this interface by means of a class only one method, then this class can be treated as an abstract class that means, no, no, that means no objects can be created for this class until you override all the methods which are there in the interface. So, you have to override all the methods so that you can create an object or you can complete the implementation of an interface in a class. And in Java also, it is possible to allow nested interface. What is the meaning of nested interface is that an interface can be declared inside a class declaration. This means that this interface is a very much local to this class itself. That means, no one class outside this in class is responsible for implementing this interface. This is the concept of it is called the nested uh, interface. This is a very restrictive use in the program usually we avoid it, but sometimes we want to make an interface which is a very explicit to a particular class only then we can think for this kind of implementation otherwise we can ignore it. Anyway, this is an example how the nested if is possible. Now, let us look at this small program here and this is the class A declaration as usual the standard normal class and you can see within this normal class we declare an interface this is the interface. So, we declare as an interface as nested if and this has the this method is an abstract method and then we can inside this class as you have the interface interface does not have any utilization until you implement it. So, here is a class B which implements this is a nested if and you can see one thing that nested if we have spent some a dot there is a special location specification that a dot means it is the interface which is declared in the class A. If you do not do in this case it will work, but in some situations if inside a class there are more than interface then better to do it like this one. So, otherwise if some interface already in the same name appears somewhere else then it can give a uh, what is called the ambiguity. So, in order to resolve this we have to explicitly mention that this interface belongs to which class. So, that is why the specific uh, location uh, mention that is a dot nested if means that this is a, a nested if inside the class A. So, this way we can uh, define it and then finally, we can implement the interface uh, that is there using the usual concept and then same can be used in your main class wherever you want to use it. So, it is the basic idea about that is just like a scope of this interface which is a nested interface inside a class is basically the static scope and it can be resolved seeing the program itself and is a local, local to this class itself. Now, let us have a very simple example about what is the utilization of an interface, why we go for an interface, what is the usage of the interface. It has two important applications, one is that whenever you use an interface it will it may if it includes some members which are declared as a final static and then uh, final static public they can be used as a global variable look like and this variable can be shared. So, it is just like a library of different vari variables that can be shareable from one class to another class. So, this is one example and another example obviously, the great example the most significant example that we can inherit in a multiple sense. As you know Java does not support single inheritance, but in an indirect way Java also helps a programmer 
to have the multiple inheritance implementation. These are the two main usage and one usage also it is their runtime polymorphism that means uh, okay, that will be discussed uh, while we will go for demonstrating the application of interface in our next module. Now, let us have the first example that how a variable can be shared across the classes if they are maintained in an interface. This is an example for like so suppose we want to we, we in this example here we can say we declare an interface the name of the interface as the shared constants and these are the different values and by default they are public static uh, automatically there. So, they are by public static int and these are the different value variables and the values are there. So, these are the basically we can say this as they are basically static variables sort of things that means they are global look like. So, they can be used one instances in everywhere there. So, these are the global variable look like as you can see in a more simple way. So, whenever we declare all these value members in an interface they can be considered as a global variable look like. Now, once these methods are declared we can use them in a program. So, we can just create a program look like. So, this is the one class the name of the class is name of the class is uh, implements this class is quotients which implements shared constant and basically it uses all these variable names as you can see here. Now, here in this class we define one ask method which has this kind of structure. So, if you go through the program you will be able to understand what exactly the ask question is there is basically it takes a random number and this random number is called prop and depending on the value of the prop it basically return no, yes, later, soon all these methods are all these members are which is already declared in the interface. So, this is the idea about a simple a, uh, simple example of course, that okay, all these methods as they are they will be used here as if there is a global. Now, so this is the way that okay, an interface can be used in this case and here is the complete program that you can see how this program can be used. This is a simple example another class ask me which implement shared constant which use the previous ask method and it has its own body it is there. And then this is the main methods which basically utilization of all the method in the last slides the ask method in this slides the answer method and it basically code this one. If you run this program it will be an interesting output which will be discussed while I will go for the demonstration in the next module. Okay, so, this basically shows emphasize that if you declare an interface then all the members those are there is basically will be used as a shared variable across the different classes. And interface can be extended we have already discussed about this that like so an interface truly works like a class as the class can, class can extend another class. So, an interface also can extend another class. So, suppose here the interface A and interface B using the same extends. So, we can extend the class that means in this interface all the method that is there or all the members which are there in the interface will be also inherited in this one. So, the basic concept is same as the class inheritance also applicable to the inheritance. So, again I want to repeat it that an interface in mostly can be treated as a class look like. That means, whatever the operate whatever the procedure that we can follow for class it can be only the exception is that for a class an object can be created. However, for an inter interface no object can be created that is all. So, this is the one idea where the interface can be extended and here is the complete idea is that on the interface extended the inherited interface can be implemented by means of a class. So, this is the one example that basically explain uh, how the inherited interface can be implemented. So, both the super class interface super interface as well as the derived interface can be used for implementation by another class. And then the multiple inheritance is the significant what is called the use of the inheritance concept here. So, here is the example that multiple inheritance means one interface can extends two or more interface, but it is not exactly the in extends rather it basically the implements actually. So, if we can plan a class which implements 
two or more interface, then we can say that this class in fact multiply inherits two interfaces. So, the concept is there and the concept is there in the class itself the multiple inheritance can be realized. Now, here few things are to be more uh, okay, uh, few things are to be carefully noted. First of all, the class suppose in implements two interface I 1 and I 2 and there is a method say M which is declared in both the interfaces. Then in the implemented class which methods needs to be implemented? In this regard I want to say this way that if the two methods are same, the two methods are same in the interface in the sense that they have the same return type and then same list of arguments having the same type. Then it basically absolutely no problem you have to override only once. Otherwise, all the methods which are there we have to override in the implementation class implementation of the interface. So, this way it basically multiply implements all the interfaces thereby multiplying inheritance it is like this one. There is another also example where we can have the class extends one class and implements another. This is also one example of multiple inheritance in there. So, by class extends for example, class B extends class A and implements interface I. Then it basically is a multiple inheritance concept it is there that means, it extends class B A means that B will inherit all the methods and members those are accessible to the class A class B it is there in addition to the interface methods and the interface variable also accessible to the class there. Now, again another important rule that if the two interface have the same variable declaration then it will give a compilation error that you have to somehow take care check that the two interface does not declare the same members value variables in uh, duplicate in the two interfaces or more than interfaces which are basically in used in multiple inheritance. And multiple inheritance is not limited to only two interfaces any number of interfaces can be considered. So, a class can implement two, three or many interfaces at the same time, but extends whenever it come into the picture it can extends only one class that is the important uh, what is called the things that you should note. Okay. So, this is the concept that and if you want to specify explicitly some interface and then again the super keyword can be used. So, here is an example for example, super method name is basically in the interface name we can discuss about if it inherits from others name to resolve the ambiguity if any. So, the super concept it is basically same way it is basically namespace collision resolution as well as the method resolution. So, this is the same concept also extendable to the interface here. Now, we have learned about the interface and then more on the interface will be discussed while we will have a quick demo on the interface and we uh, advise you to uh, have the good lessons in the interface demonstration. Now, our next topic that we are going to cover is a very important topic that this topic is basically to address the questions that I have mentioned here. So, the definitely the big question that how a Java programmer a software programmer can develop the program which is very much robust that means, fall free tolerant program. And then there are many errors and particularly it is uh, the concern whenever the program size is increased from low cap low size low volume to high volume because as the code size will increase the number of errors possibility will increase. So, how to deal with this situation? So, all these things will be discussed in our uh, next discussion The discussion is called um, multiple uh, is called exception handling concept. Thank you, thank you very much.